Good morning, my Olive. I hope all is well. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you now for this day. We thank you, Lord, for letting us come. Lord, I pray for all that are here is gathered today. I pray for the ones right now that are at home. I pray for the ones now that are have any troubles or any worries. I pray, Lord, now that you'll watch over them, you'll keep them strong. I just pray, Lord, now that your peace will rest, rule, and abide in us, Lord, right now. I pray, Lord, continue to keep us strong during this COVID-19 period. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, my Olive. I hope all is well. Uh, side note, I did have another plan for today's message, but a gate all of a sudden came up where I wanted to go and a no trespassing sign. So uh, I will not be able to record from that spot, but never fear I'll have a another idea for next week at another place so tonight i was regulated to being on my porch so we'll come with something different next week on our plans for reopening the way things are going is the third sunday in july i will start live streaming from mile olive the third and the fourth sunday in july on the first sunday in august we will tentatively reopen I say tentatively because I do not know if we're going to have church at 10 o'clock versus 11 o'clock hour just yet because uh, we have to minimize our time that we're going to be in church. And also there's several restrictions and things that we have to have in place. So for what the plan is now, the first Sunday in August, we will reopen the third Sunday in July. I'll be at church and I will live stream uh, from the church. I ask you to continue to be in prayer continue to pray that all will go well we continue to continue to pray for the body that you continue lord for us just to be strong this is going to be a challenging time for us when we do come back uh, there's a lot of restrictions and things that we have to do and it's all designed for us to be safe so over the next coming two three weeks we'll have more we'll be able to put forth so that you'll be able to know what we're doing so that you'll be informed I do know if you do come, we do when we do reopen, all parishioners will have to wear a mask. Also, there will be no congregational singing in the church. Uh, also, that there will be a hand sanitizer station for you to wash your hands coming in and going out. And I know all families will set together. So, there's some of the things that we're going to be doing to help protect us. So we will, uh, also there will be no choirs. There is a model for a particular, so that we can sing, but we gotta have time to get everything set up as far as Derek singing and maybe someone else other than that, that would be it. But there's a strict guideline that we have to follow on that. More information will be coming about that in the next week or two. Or you can actually go on the website of the North Georgia Conference and look it up and they've got everything laid out of what is planned. But enough is said about that, my Olive. I hope you've had a great week. Uh, I had to readjust. I had a completely different message planned out. When me and Dooney left fireman training, we looked up. I said, oh, they must knew we were coming. They done put a fence up, gate up, and a big no truck passing sign with orange labels. So I said, well, we'll have to readjust. So let us begin with prayer, and then we'll have a word. Lord, I thank you now for this day. I thank you, Lord, for letting us come. I pray, Lord, now, I know your word is going to go forth, but I pray, Lord, now it'll go, for, go forth on a fertile ground and that you will, Lord, right now plant a seed and that seed will be watered and it'll be nurtured and that it will spring forth in your appointed place in your appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. My life, a topic I, will, I wanted to say today would be three reasons to be encouraged. Three reasons to be encouraged. For your scripture, I would use Joshua 1 and 9. And it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You know, if you look around, they're saying COVID-19 is going back up again in the state of Georgia. You're seeing all the protests, all the marches. You're seeing our leaders having no clue what they're doing. We see all the things going around. 
you know, you're still having to wear a mask when we go out, you know, still um, eating out and stuff. We still got even the changes that we're going to have to make at church for the time being. Uh, it could be a reason for us sometimes to get discouraged. You know, maybe your hours have been cut on your job or maybe, you know, the stress of going to work every day, the stress of this, everything that's around us, the stress of the struggle, struggles, the stress of all the problems. It's easy for us to get discouraged. It's easy for us just to, just to give up. Today I had my plan, everything planned out, what I wanted to do. I mean, Dooney was gonna go do our message and all of a sudden it got changed. But God said for us not to be discouraged, to have confidence in him. You know, Psalms 57 and 7 says, My heart is confident in you, O oh my God. My heart is confident. No wonder I can sing your praises. I've said this once, I'll say it again. I think it's, it's easy for us to praise God when it's going well. But what about when it's in the struggle we're in now? The stress. I did get tested for COVID-19. I want to encourage everyone from Mount Olive, go get tested get tested it's better to know no i've not got my results back yet but i'm not concerned or worried about it but i felt like it was my civic duty to go and get tested and now i want to encourage each of y'all to go get tested in the message bible first corinthians 10 and 12 it says forget about self-confidence it's useless cultivate god confidence we've got to have confidence but we got to have godly confidence that god is still with us as Joshua will say, some of sometimes people can get discouraged. You know, even though there's COVID, we still got sickness we've got to deal with. I hate to say it, you sneeze a couple times, you don't know, you sore, your, your throat gets sore a little bit, you just don't know. And then you're still dealing with anxiety. Maybe your anxiety is being in the house with your loved ones all the time. Maybe your anxiety is when you go out, you have a struggle. Whatever it is, but we need a godly confidence in knowing that God is still in control. God is still able. And God can still deliver us. But I want to tell you some truth about us to be encouraged. One, my God, he is always with us. God is always with us. He said in his word, he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us. In Romans 8, 31 is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, if God is for us, who can ever be against us? As parents, whenever anything bad happened to our kids, but we're there for them. <coughs> I cough, but I don't have COVID. I'm outside in the yard and my allergies are just driving me through the roof right now. But church, here's the thing. I have confidence because I know God is always with us. We tend to forget that God said in his word, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. We tend to forget that sometimes we might feel alone. Sometimes we might feel afraid. But we tend to forget that God is always with us. If you're hoping to climb out a mountain of debt, let me tell you, God is with you. If you're warning now for worry and stress, let me tell you, God is with you. If right now you're having pain and heartache and struggle, I tell you today, God is with you. And it's not something to take lightly. You know, many times, you know, when we're in school and someone say, I got your back. You know, if something's going down, I got your back. Or someone will say, I'm not going to tell on you. Or I'm not going to snitch you out. I got your back. Think of it as, one thing I do know is this. Friends will leave you. Family will forsake you at times. But what I do know is God is always with us. He said in his word, he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us. So that is a truth that we can hang on right now. That's the truth that we can have the confidence that we don't have to be discouraged. We don't understand at times the power that God has. Let me tell you, if you had a friend that had ultimate power in their hand, wouldn't you not call on that friend when you was in trouble? If you were mounting the dead and your close, close friend, someone you knew apparently was a, had a lot of money, multi-billionaire, millionaire, whatever, had money, would you not call on that friend? If you had a friend that was a doctor, that knew how to help you or give you a remedy for your sickness or your cold or what you're going through, would you not call that friend? Well, I got a friend that can stick closer than a brother. We have a friend that can stick with us. We got a friend that said, I'll never leave you. He's right there with us. And we've got to understand that God is with us. And if God is for us, he is more 
than the world against us. Sorry, church. Let me say hi to my neighbor. So, church, also, we've got to realize that God is always with us. And second of all, God always helps. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 says, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we have with this confidence, the Lord is my helper, and I will not be afraid. You know, people always say, I'll help you out. Have you ever had someone say, I'll help you, and turn around, they don't even show up? Hey, I'm going to help you in your yard tomorrow. Or, hey, I'm going to help you get through. Or, hey, I'm going to help you change that tire. I'm going to help you cut your grass. I'm going to help you fix your deck. I'm going to help you fix something. Lo and behold, you sit around and you wait. And guess what? They don't even show up. But to think of it is, God has helped us. I think about Mount Olive. I think about the people at Mount Olive. And I think about how much God has truly helped a lot of people. I know God has helped me. I cannot count the times ever that of what God has all done for me. God has helped me through so many times. He's helped me through addictions. He's helped me through pains. He's helped me through struggle. He's helped me through depression. He's helped me through a heartache. And the thing of it is, I know he'll help me. But sometimes we are so proud that we cannot ask for help. The only way you can get help is you gotta ask for help. Sometimes it's really hard. But church, I want you to look back now and look how God has helped you. I want you to look back how God has brought you through. He's always helped us, and he's going to continue to help you. That anxiety you might have sitting right now, or you're thinking about, that struggle you might have, that addiction you might have, the pain you might have, whatever it is, God will help you. But all you have to do is ask. You just got to ask him to help. Help. Help me, Lord. Get over this anxiety. Help me, Lord, with what's going on in this society. You look on the news and you're seeing killing after killing after killing after killing. You're seeing struggle after struggle. Is there ever a time that we need God to help our nation? Now is the time we need to ask God to help us. Help us get through this time. Help us. Help us give us strength. Help me through my struggle. Help me through my pain. And to think of it is what I know about God is God will help us. But all we have to do is ask. Thirdly, I want to tell you to be encouraged is that lastly, my God is still working in me. Let me tell you, the thing of it is, I know I'm a work in progress. I mean, I don't know about you. I can't speak for no one but me. I still have struggles. I still have things. Sometimes I do what I shouldn't do. Sometimes I'll say what I shouldn't say. But one thing I know, God is still working in me to make me a better Christian, a better husband, a better dad, and a better pastor. Philippians 1 and 6, being confident in this, that God has begun a good work in you, and he will carry it unto completion until the day of Christ Jesus. When my wife was going through college, I would always say this prayer every night to say it. I would say it to her whenever she got discouraged. God has started a good work in you, and he'll see it to completion. God has started a great work in some of you that are sitting at home right now. And you might be feel like you're going to quit. You might feel like you're going to give up. You might want to feel like that you're going to just, that's it, I've had enough. I want to tell you, don't quit. This scripture right here, write it down. Memorize it. I'll say it again, Philippians 1 and 6. Be confident of this. Be confident of this. Let me say it again. Be confident of this, that the God who began a good work in you will carry it on until completion, until the day of Christ Jesus. God has started a great work in a lot of you that are sitting at home. God has started a great work in you, but you have to believe that he started that work, and you got to believe that he's going to see it to completion. The thing about it is now, church, I've got a lot of projects out here in this yard, and I've started a lot of projects. i finished some. But I can go ahead and tell you some things I didn't finish. But the one thing I know about God is this. Whatever he has started in me and whatever he has started in you, he'll see it to completion. But you just got to believe and you got to keep saying that, God, you started this. You may be struggling with some spiritual doubts, nagging habits. You just came to come. But I can tell you right now, God is still working in you. 
I'm going to tell you, church, this time I want you to continue to say, God, I want you to continue to work in me. Do not be dis dismayed. Do not be discouraged. But I want to tell you now to stand boldly on God's word, to stand there knowing that he has started to work in you, knowing that he is with you, know that he is working, and know that he's never going to quit, and he's never going to give up on his church. So church today, what about it today for you? Don't be discouraged. But realize what God has started, God is, will see it all the way through. Realize this, that God is always with us. God will always help us. And God is always working in you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you now for this day. We thank you, Lord, for letting us come. Lord, we pray right now that you watch over us. And we pray now that you'll keep us. We pray, Lord, now keep us strong in you. Lord, I continue to plead the blood of Jesus upon Mount Olive and all the Mount Olive family that you will continue to watch over us. And I pray, Lord, you'll keep us, keep us, Lord, right now, protected by you. And Lord, I just pray now for the one that might be at home right now struggling with a doubt, a fear, or worry, whether they're watching via YouTube or watching via Facebook. We pray, Lord, now that you help them, Lord, and give them an encouraging word to continue to strengthen in you. So Lord, right now, I pray continue to keep us, and keep us strong in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My Lord, if more announcements be coming to how we plan to reopen the things we're doing, I would also say, if you would, you could still give via the website, www.mountolivenoonan.com. That is www.mountolivenoonan.com. That's M-T-O-L-I-V-E, noonan.com. So, Mount Olive, until next week. I'll see you then. And next week, I promise not to be sitting on my deck. Well, I hope not to be because I do have a plan again next week to do another uh, another interesting message. I'll give you a hint. I will be standing on something, and I'm sure everyone's going to be shaking their head and saying, Reverend Kane, get off that for you hurt yourself. So, until next week, be safe. Do not forget about the Zoom meeting. At 12.15 Sunday, Zoom meeting at 12.15. Until next week, see you then.